Oh, it's getting into early October, and I'm sure a few of you have an all-day sit on your mind. And it might be that you're going after that core target buck that you have, you're waiting for that buck to come on your land, and your idea is to sit all day because, again, you know, more time in the woods equals more bucks, right? Well, that's not true at all. But what I found, there is a case to be made for an all day sit. I rarely sit all day in one stand because one stand just does not have it all and allow me to maximize the morning time, evening time, midday time, all in the same day. And so let's talk about when to take an all day sit. Now, if it's early season, October lull, the late season, maybe late gun season, December, muzzleloader seasons, much of the time, those mature bucks are not moving during those time periods all day long. And so you sitting in one spot all day is very inefficient for you. You're burning yourself out. And much of the time, just because you're in the woods all day does not mean that you have a better chance at a mature buck during those times. And, and of course, you can never say never, but um, during those time periods, uh, you're a lot less likely to see a mature buck during the midday hours, maybe even during the morning hours too. And so let's talk about first, when would you even sit an all day sit or even look for an all day sit? Well, of course the rut, um, and I'm looking at the peak rut specifically, and even the post rut towards the end of the rut. And I'll give you some examples in Wisconsin. That might mean um, the peak rut starting October 31st, November 3rd, through November 10th, whatever that might be, November 13th. And then you look at that post rock period until the 14th, the 17th of November in that time period. Now, if you're in Southern Ohio, you might stretch that into November 22nd, November 25th. Uh, same with Missouri, Southern Iowa, and Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana. You could stretch that a little bit. Those are great times to take advantage of an all day sit because you can count on mature bucks predictably moving morning, midday, and evening hours. And the same can be said for the post rut period when mature bucks may travel long distances to get to where you're at to look for does and even start moving over to food sources. Now, the pre-rut. What I don't like about an all-day set during the pre-rut is that mature bucks move a great amount during the morning hours. Very high priority to me during the morning hours where they're moving during the morning hours, they're moving several hours during the morning, they're starting to slow down at noon or one, they're really taking it lazy in the afternoon when it warms up, you know, at the end of October, that last 10 days of October in Southwest Wisconsin, maybe the last few days of October and first few days of November in the more Southern Midwest areas like Southern Ohio, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois, Missouri. Great time to sit in a morning bedding area during the pre-rut and then focus on food in the evening. If you're in that morning bedding area, when it's an appropriate set, and let's say that you could even extend that into the early season, early October, the October lull, there is a case sometimes that you can make for or taking a morning set and you're going in the backside of bedding, and you're waiting for deer to come off distant food sources and you're waiting and they're not even showing up till an hour, hour and a half into first light. Not a great idea to sit all day on a little food plot next to a big food plot and big food source because you're only gonna see those deer in the morning and the evening, you're probably gonna blow out that food source in the morning getting into the stand, which means they're not coming back in the evening anyways. So there are times where maybe you can make a case where you're taking that morning sit in early October, October law, even the pre-rut, but does that stand have what it takes to produce evening movement and almost all the time it does not. Morning stands, typically by bedding areas away from food, evening stands closer to food sources, and, and then when you get into the peak rut, you, you have to account for that middle period of the time. So let's say you're going to the peak rut and mature bucks might be moving all day, you wanna sit in a stand all day, then the number one all day stand that I'm gonna look for at an appropriate time, such as um, the, the peak of the rut, and I'll give you one more example too. I wanna to find a stand that's between bedding, between bedding and food, between bedding and bedding. I wanna find that X of movement 
that I could count on a mature buck actually cruising through during the middle of the day. And folks, this is why I do not like a water hole and often a mock scrape except for census or rubbing post in a food plot because you're diminishing the value of that attraction by combining attractions. The deer are already going to the food plot in the first place. Put that water hole, that rubbing, that, uh, rubbing post, that mock scrape 100 yards off that food source. Now you can tap into mature bucks that are cruising during the middle of the day that would not have otherwise gone out into that food source. So you take a stand that maybe is 100 yards off food. There might be bedding around a point on one side over on a flat and another side 200 yards apart. And so you start to get in that X of movement where deer could pass that stand in the morning on their way back from food and you're not blowing out the food source because you're not sitting on the food source. And then that stand location is also between bedding areas that may be, it might be doe bedding areas that are 50 to 75, 100 yards off the field edge and you're sitting in between on a funnel of some kind. Now you can talk about an all day sit in that location during the peak rut because bucks will be moving all day and, and think of it this way, and I've talked about this before, but I think it's important to score your sit. Score your sit at a 10 in the morning, a 10 in the midday, and a 10 in the evening in an all-day sit. Now, if you're sitting on the back side of a bedding area, it might be outstanding for morning. It could be outstanding for morning during the pre-rut. But the closer it gets to dark, those deer are leaving that bedding area and going towards food. So if you're not in between the bedding area and a food source, then you just scored very low in your afternoon sit. And sure, you got to spread out all your stuff on social media and say, I'm going in for an all day sit. I think people like to brag about that. But how many of those stand locations actually have it all? Have midday cruising, have morning bedding movement, have evening bedding area to food source movement. I know on my stands, I have three properties that I hunt right now. And let's say I have, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact amount. I'm just gonna throw a number out there, maybe 30 stands, and blinds 32 33 i can honestly say i have about three or four that i could count being in that x of deer movement where i could count on movement all day long i place a high priority on my morning sits where i'm going into the back side of a bedding area waiting for deer to come back to me especially during the pre-rut in the rut and the post-rut and even the secondary rut in early december for example in southwest wisconsin those are my money stands my bread and butter stands where i've shot 70 80 percent of my box my mature box my oldest box a lot of them have come in that morning period, but that stand is an incredible dud after it gets past one, two in the afternoon, simply because if the deer are not right next to me, then they're leaving wherever they're bedding and they're heading to food in the afternoon. And as it gets closer to dark, they're actually leaving my position and that creates a dud of a stand. So an all day sit, I said I'd give one more example, opening day of gun season, maybe even the second day, I love hunkering down in an area that would be a similar all day sit for the rut, meaning it's between bedding areas, it's in a thick area, it might even be on the back side of a bedding area that's flanked by another bedding area on the other side, but I'm getting into thick stuff, I'm getting in between bedding areas and I'm getting in between food and bedding movements, I'm getting in that X of movement where I can expect the highest traffic location during gun season and I'm counting that as an all day set. Now there are, are times during the late season, there's very, very chilly weather. Uh, in the morning it's 10 degrees, it's warming up to 38 in the afternoon. I might go into a stand location that is near bedding, near a food source, maybe especially a high browse location during December where deer are browsing all day on woody regeneration, briars, maybe some leftover acorns. And then I want that stand location to be on the way to an evening food source as well. So again, I'm putting my myself in a position where I'm going in, I'm not getting by the bedding area. I might go into that stand location an hour after first light, maybe even two hours, because I wanna sneak in away from the bedding area, but near the bedding area in a hidden area. You know, in hill country, you'd access behind a ridge and flatland, you'd access behind some conifer, maybe through a ditch. Get into a location behind a berm where you can actually get into a stand location near bedding Look at deer that might come out and feed on an oak flat in a clear cut location at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock when the temperatures are warming up and the snow is starting to get soft and then at the same time those deer are heading to food. So not quite an all day sit but an area where you can get in because you're not spooking deer in the morning and then you're sitting there 
looking for feeding deer in the middle of the day when it's warm and they can conserve a lot of energy. They're, they're not expending a lot of energy because it's not cold. And, and then they're on their way to food in the afternoon, which is a no-brainer set in the late season. Is, is, uh, and, it, and if you can shoot, you have a muzzleloader and you can shoot a distant food source, um, 100 to 200 yards away in a stand like that, then all the better for that evening set. So think about it. When you're going in for an all-day set, really, is that stand an all-day set? Score it. Score it even in the early season. It might be a 10 out of 10 in the morning, but is it a zero out of 10 in the evening because all the deer are moving to food and that stand does not relate to a food source. Maybe that's a 10 out of 10 in the evening. You have a great bedding area, you have a great food source, the deer are moving to that food source, you're only 50 yards away, you're a long ways away from that bedding area, not a great morning stand because if it's close enough to spook deer out of the food source, then you shouldn't sit in it during the morning hours. Learn to score evening, morning. Learn to score the midday during the middle of the rut, maybe even the late season time, maybe even gun season. Really think about each portion of the day and how that value adds up to creating an awesome whitetail hunt for you. And when it comes down to it, you may find that your stand locations, the majority and the vast majority are just not appropriate for an all day set. 2006, I sat 100 and 10 sits, 110 sits in four states over a four month period, 11 all day sits. The rest were morning, evening sits, combinations of both. I always like, if I have a hot morning stand, sit it. If I know another evening stand that I can rank a higher value, then I'm gonna, if I can safely, I'm gonna get out of that morning stand, go to the evening stand. I'm always looking to maximize my sits to make the most efficient use of my time in the woods. And again, it's not about the amount of time you spend in the woods that'll equal your success. It's the amount of quality time that you spend in the woods that'll equal potential consistent target buck success every single season. Think about scoring your stand locations and really be realistic. And uh, might be a hard pill to swallow, but be realistic about your expectations per stand the next time you're collecting all your goodies and food and, and comforts to take an all day set.